Well, they finally did it. They finally released Guillermo del Toro's Kong v. Godzilla Dawn of Justice. And I gotta say, having seen it, I really enjoyed myself. I mean, based on my trailers video, it's no secret that I'm always hyped for a giant monster fight. And I love both of these monsters, so I was particularly excited for this specific monster fight. But this movie was, if I'm being honest, sillier than expected. Like, yes, this is a movie where Denki King fights King Bowser over who has the right to challenge Mario in single combat. So you already shouldn't be taking this movie too seriously. But even then, there was something perpetually off about this movie. Like, it kept making unintentional references to just so much other stuff. And I think the problem stems from one word, intertextuality. In case you don't know, intertextuality refers to the relationship between texts and how the meaning of one text can change when related to another. You can basically think of it as the story making a reference to another story so that the writer doesn't need to waste time expositing ideas. Let's take an example from Star Wars. Say you need to introduce a handsome, if not morally questionable, space outlaw. You could just have him show up and introduce himself with a wanted poster as a business card. Or you could play on tropes that are familiar enough for us to get the point. Like introducing him in a cantina, in space, where he's shown having questionable conversations with questionable characters, in space. And why don't you make him shoot a space gun first, just for good measure? Yes, George, he has to shoot first. No one knows what McClunky means. And much like Han, being able to draw these comparisons is as important, if not more important, when your main characters are two 400-foot titanic metaphors for the untamed natural world and humanity stampede into the nuclear age. Now, we're heading into spoiler territory, so this is your warning. Like I was saying, in this film, intertextuality is huge. Defining a creature's thoughts and motivations without them being able to say anything is a challenge even when the movie takes itself seriously. If you've seen The Shape of Water, then you know what I mean. Not only is the fishman not a human, the main character is also mute. And yet, Guillermo del Toro makes every interaction between them feel vibrant and alive because he has either introduced or played off of tropes that we are all familiar with. And this movie does the same. In the movie, a 400 foot tall monkey understands sign language and no one is going to question that because movies, TV, and the real world have shown us that monkeys are more than smart enough to do this. But this trait is crucial because it shows us Kong is intelligent and therefore acts rationally. Meanwhile, over the course of two other movies, it has been established that Godzilla isn't malevolent. He never attacks unless threatened, and even if you didn't know that, you'd understand that most animals aren't naturally eager to pick a fight when they don't have to. These simple ideas help characterize Kong's intelligence, Godzilla's behavior, and the mystery of why these 400-foot titans are suddenly so keen on fighting when they don't have a logical need to. But here's the thing about intertextuality. It needs to serve a purpose to be meaningful. Otherwise, you're just making references that can distract from the film. For instance, in Star Trek Heart of Darkness, Benedict Cumberbatch says, My name is Khan. And justifiably, Chris Pine is confused because he has literally never heard of this person before. We later find out who Khan is, but unless you watched a different, better Star Trek movie from 30 years earlier, this scene would fall flat for you, just like it does for the characters. And this is the core of the problem with Godzilla vs. Kong. This movie is fun, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, Godzilla literally fires a laser to the center of the Earth just so Kong can fast travel to fight him. But even then, this movie starts making references that, despite the premise of the movie, just come off as silly. How do we show that the hollow Earth is both naturalistic and alien? Just rip off the floating space rocks from Avatar. Kong needs a secret weapon to beat a radioactive lizard god? He needs the axe. How do we show Kong is king? Have him sit on a literal throne in the middle of a volcano at the center of the Earth. What about telepathically controlling a 400-foot robot and then having it go rogue? Well, fortunately, you have two Pacific Rims to choose from. And then, my favorite, Kong and Godzilla have been fighting this whole time. How do we make them bros? It's super simple. Just have a billionaire tech mogul resurrect the villain from the last movie so that they have to team up and destroy the third act surprise villain so that they can set up the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate movie. Like, I'm not kidding here, it is a beat for beat repeat of Batman v Superman. There's even a Save Martha style scene between a monkey and a lizard, and we all saw it the same way because no one will shut up about the DCEU for more than five minutes. That all said, I still think this movie was great. In fact, it was exactly what I wanted. Watching Kong and Godzilla team up to fight Mechagodzilla is so many layers of camp that it made the original Kong v Godzilla proud. But it's also become part of an annoying trend. 
one where big budget movies keep making references without thinking through the implications that come from introducing those ideas. Intertextuality is a powerful tool that makes it possible to communicate ideas to the audience without having to lecture to them. But it has to be used sparingly and on purpose. Unless the movie's goal was to make me laugh for two hours, in which case, great job. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. If you also noticed a ton of over-the-top, somehow niche references to other material, let me know in the comments so I can see them on my next rewatch, and I'll see you next time.